What is going on guys, it is WrestleMania here, back with another video. It's time for a tag team title match as the acclaimed Defender World Tag Team Titles against the Guns. Join us now as we look at this week's edition of Dynamite, as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including Bailey challenges Michael Cole to a match at WrestleMania, WWE is preparing for Seth Rollins vs Logan Paul at WrestleMania, CM Punk ready to return, AEW fans disgusted with title change, more SmackDown stars moving to Raw and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. As always, won't recap the matches, but just look at the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. As always, we start off with the good as number one, Jericho vs. Ricky Starks feud heating up. That's not the JS vs. the Blackpool Combat Club, but Chris Jericho's feud against Ricky Starks that's been entertaining, with both sides getting the right amount of wins to keep things moving. Ricky Starks is a future world champion, but he's not quite at that level yet. However, he'll soon be there judging from his interaction with Jericho and company. Number two, MGF, scumbag for life. Now, everyone knows MJF as a scumbag, but the AEW world champion apparently felt the need to remind the AEW galaxy why they should despise him. MJF told a story of dangerously driving his junior prom date in a sports car, ultimately getting into a crash. He then recalled how he switched places with the unconscious passenger, putting her in the driver's seat so he could keep his license. MJF reminded the fans and Brian Danielson that history doesn't remember how the winners got there, they just remember that they won. Number 3. More Good Promos MJF's promos are always going to be good, but he wasn't the only AEW star who shined on the stick. Stockley Hathaway cut a good promo as a cowardly manager who talks trash behind wrestlers' backs and folds like an accordion when confronted by them. Samoa Joe showed why he's so good at either putting opponents over, here Darby Allen, or running them down, here Wardlow. Both WWE and AEW seem to have found the mark for the right amount of promos. Number 4, Jamie Hayter could be a megastar in AEW. Now it's never easy to tell when a wrestler will break out from being a main eventer to a megastar that a promotion, or in this case a division, can be built around. However, Jamie Hayter appears to be the potential to take AEW's women's division to the next level. She's quickly become a female wrestler as credible as Dr. Britt Baker and fans seem to love her work. Jade Cargill is fantastic too, but so far Hayter is a top candidate for the top role in AEW's women's division. Number 5, Ready for the Prime Time now it's time to take Takashita and Rush's careers out of the looking strong in defeat category to break out stars. Both men have shown that they have the talent to put on good matches, but they need to be presented as winners. Their respective performances against MJF and Brian Danielson show they have the tools to succeed and the fans' support. And now it's time to see how they can do when they start winning matches against quality competition. And a good trios match. However, the last night's trios match between the Elite and Top Flight slash AR Fox was exciting, but the AEW trios champion needs some better opponents. Revolution will be here soon, and it's time for AEW to up the quality of Elite's opponents. Hopefully, they'll consider pinning the House of Black against the Bucks and Kenny Omega. But that was a good what about the bad as number one low rent district. Last night's impractical Joker segment was a little low rent, another example of bad corporate synergy. Yes, we understand that Impractical Jokers has its fans, but did AEW need to put some of its biggest stars into a cross-promotion for a show that airs on True TV? Was Hardy unavailable? And number two, the NWO called and they want their spray paint back. A poor Lever Bates, she barely gets TV time and when she does, she has to play victim to Mean Girls, Tony Storm and Soraya. Storm and Soraya's attack on Lever Bates was meaningless and seemed like a cheap rip-off of the NWO beating down opponents and spray painting them. If Soraya wants to rip off a 26 year old gimmick, she should at least learn how to use a can of spray paint. But that was the bad, what about the downright ugly as the ass champs? What in the blue hell was AEW thinking putting the AEW World Tank Team Championship on Austin and Colton Gunn? A wrestling has seen some terrible title changes, but this has to be considered one of the worst as the guns have been a mid card act during their entire AEW run. Putting the tank titles on them seemed like a desperate move to get them over. It also invites the question why AEW didn't put the acclaimed into a title program with better competition. Well, that was our quick review of Dynamite. What do you guys think of the show? Let us know in the comments down below. Now let's move on to the news. Our first bit of news looks at WWE preparing for Seth Rollins vs Logan Paul at WrestleMania. Atop of today's news, there should be no doubt that the WWE is preparing for Logan Paul to battle Seth freaking Rollins at WrestleMania. The WWE has dropped a few hints such as Paul surprising Rollins at the Royal Rumble by eliminating him and an interview where Rollins walked away when asked about Paul. Now the visionary is planting more seeds for the match as seen by a recent appearance on the Pat McAfee show. 
There, Rollins ranted about Paul saying he doesn't care about nothing but himself. I can respect the hustle, alright? I really do, because it takes hustle to get where he is at, and I get the opportunities he's got. But at the end of the day, it's about passion. No one is going to suit up and play in the NFL football because they're a social media superstar, right? They're going to get creamed. He's going to step into my world, and he's going to get creamed. Monday Night Rollins also compared Paul's WWE run to that of former NFL punter Pat McAfee. If you want to contribute and give back to our industry, you're a fan of it and you love it, right Pat? You're a fan of it, you love it, you give back to it. You talk about it at any chance you get and you put it over. That's not him, dude. That's not him. He's in it for himself. He's in it for his own gain. What do you guys think about a Rollins vs Paul match? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, is CM Punk ready to return? Orma also commented on Punk's torn triceps, speculating that the straight edge superstar could be back soon based on the typical recovery time for injuries like this. While Dr. Dave may be off in his prognosis about Punk's return date, he discussed Punk's value to AEW if the two sides are able to work out a deal. Meltzer had this to say on the Wrestling Observer Radio saying, But they're lacking in that babyface position, something fierce. They had a shot with MJF obviously, they did a double cross on that. MJF was great as a heel tonight, but they don't have the guy. That's one of the reasons Punk's not going to be the guy either. Meltzer reiterated what he and others have to say about a CM Punk return, the backstage baggage he would bring with him. I know some people might say, well, Punk's coming back. Punk may come back. He will be available to come back if they want to use him a couple of months. It's not like it's so far in the future. Of course, if they were to bring Punk back, that opens up a lot of other issues that we can talk about another day. That's the weakness. There's no easy answer to this, it's not like you can snap your fingers and create a baby face. If Punk isn't seen as a top baby face or heel, why bring him back? Given his reputation as a backstage troublemaker and how he appears to be injury prone, Tony Khan may be better off buying out his contract. Next up, Gigi Dolan legitimately hurt during Toxic Attraction breakup. It looks like former Toxic Attraction member Gigi Dolan was actually injured when former teammate JC Jane attacked her on this week's edition of NXT. In case you missed it, Jane kicked Dolan in the door, part of Bailey's Ding Dong Hello set, and Dolan's face was smashed and she uploaded a picture of the damage. Figure 4 Online's Brian Alvarez reports that the spot apparently went wrong because it was believed that when Jane kicked Dolan, the door would open. That didn't happen, and resulting in her getting clobbered. Meltzer and Brian Alvarez discussed a spot during a recent Wrestling Observer Radio saying that she got whacked pretty good on that one, that kick. Alvarez added, the story is that she's going to be alright, but they're going to keep her off television for a few weeks to sell it, and God knows they should. They should keep her off for a month after that. She was slaughtered. There's no word on what WWE's plans are for JC Jane while Dolan recovers. Next up, AEW fans disgusted with title change. AEW fans are none too happy with the recent title change on this week's Dynamite. Colton Austin Gunn's shocking win over the acclaimed for the AEW World Tag Team Championship immediately led to chance of bullshit from fans. This should come as no surprise as the guns have been consistently booked as mid-carders at best while the Acclaim are arguably AEW's hottest team right now. Next up, more SmackDown stars moving to Raw. The Maximum male models moved from SmackDown to Raw recently and rumour has it there could be more members of the blue brand jumping over. PW Insider is reporting that Los Lotharios are headed to the red brand. There have been talks of Los Lotharios moving to Raw as early as 6th February. However, they may have felt that one team moving was enough for that night. It's worth noting that the models are now listed at WWE.com as Raw Superstars, while Los Lotharios are still listed as SmackDown Superstars. And finally, Bayley challenges Michael Cole at WrestleMania. And last but not least, it appears that Bayley is ready to accept Michael Cole's invitation to a match at WrestleMania. The WWE's role model has been tormenting Cole for years, and he challenged her to a match at the Showcase of the Immortals, reminding Bayley he's undefeated there. Bailey discussed the challenge recently after a fan inquired about a potential match. Because I'm to be every single time, I see him and says, when are we going to have our match? I'm undefeated. I'm like, dude, I have a lot to do, but there will become a day where I can finally whoop him and maybe take his job. Such match could take place at WrestleMania 40. What do you guys think? Would you guys like to see that? Let us know in the comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.